Uh, they don't want you, they just want Sue in the mailbox. What up, everybody? It's your boy I Am Sue, and on today's episode of Taps In, we have the wonderful and talented Roslyn. How you doing? I'm good. How are you? I'm great. Great that you're here now. <laughs> um, do you know how to say my last name? Roslyn Gold. On Wood Day? Yes! <laughs> you actually pronounced that perfectly. Thank you, thank you. I've been ha noticing I got a knack for that. Like, if somebody's showing me a word in a different language, I'll just be able to say it. Okay, what what languages can you speak? Can you speak any? Uh, I can speak a little Spanish. Hola, My little está? brother, uh, bien, y tú? Uh, bien, gracias. <laughs> um, yo soy Sudan. Yo me gusto música. Mucho, mucho música. Bueno. Que lindo. <laughs> um, me gusta música también, también pero sí, sí. me gusta baloncesto más, más mejor. Mi, mi español, yo, uh, cuando yo hablo español, no bueno. Your Spanish <laughs> is poquito, actually good, though. Un poquito. What you just said? Oh, wait, oh, did you say you like to dance more than you like music? No, I said, did I say bailar or baloncesto? I said basketball. Uh, <laughs> basketball, that's my love. Basketball. Mm -hmm. Okay. I didn't know that word was that. I thought it was just... I mean, my teacher basketball. said basketball. That's what my teacher <laughs> yeah. said. Basketball. That's, that's not basic. Yeah, that, that works. So, I think baloncesto is also basketball. Baloncesto. Okay. Well, yeah, that's Senora <laughs> Cardenas Diaz. Let me shout out to her. Even though she gave me a D plus, she told me knew I was wrong. Right. Anyway, though, I want to talk about your background. Like, just a little bit, like, where you from and mm -hmm. just some more stuff about you, like, growing up. What was it like? Um, well, I think it's important to start with my roots. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, earlier before this, we were talking a little, but my last name, yeah. um, Gold Onwode. Yeah, yeah. Gold is my mother. Mm -hmm. She's Russian and Polish and Jewish, mm -hmm. and we have family in Israel as well. And mm -hmm. then Onwode is my dad, mm -hmm. so he's Nigerian. He's yeah. from there. He lives there now. And I'm black and white, but, you know, I very much know my African roots and also my Jewish kind of culture and heritage there. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But and I'm from New York. From, you're straight from the root of Africa. So we mean you probably the same level of black. <laughs> honestly, like. I mean, you could trace a lot of different, a lot of American blacks back to their roots, back to Africa, yeah. as well as other places. But yeah, yeah. I mean, I really, um, I'm connected to that side. Mm -hmm. My dad growing up, and I'm from Queens, I'm from New York. He always said it was important to know who you are, where you're from, your culture. And even as a kid, um, Sometimes when you're younger, you don't know how to embrace all that you are. Like when I was a kid, sometimes you would get made fun of for being African or, you know, kids would say things like, you know, just make fun of my hair or yeah, my mom foul. didn't know how to do it. And so yeah. you were you were almost embarrassed a little bit. As you get older, you're like, this is what makes me special. Right. right, right and I right. have culture mm -hmm. and I have people and I've been to Africa and we, we enjoy delicious food and we have great yeah, music yeah. and, you know, it's important to me. Yeah, Nigerians know how to turn up. It was yes, like <laughs> Nigerian Independence Day a, a while back. A little a bit ago, party yeah, yeah. In Oakland, my boy invited me. I wasn't able to go, but next time I'm going to hopefully check it out. Yeah, make sure you go about three hours late, though. Because <laughs> Nigerian time <laughs> Nigerian time is really, really behind. So that's worse than CP time. It's, yeah, there's, there, <laughs> there's on time, CP time, and then Nigerian time. Like, I've been to Nigerian parties where the people throwing it, you get to their house and my dad was always like a Nigerian that liked to kind of keep time. So yeah, he'd be yeah. there, you'd get to their house, they're throwing it, and they're just in their pajamas. They haven't even started. Not even dressed, coming to get nothing. Children be at the parties having fun till like 2 in the morning, 3 in the morning. It's 8 year olds, oh, 6 that's year olds. So lit. It's lit. Actually, yeah. Nigerians were the first people to be lit. I believe it. <laughs> Do you know what to spray someone is? No. Okay, spraying someone is when, when they're dancing in special occasions or any occasion for Nigerians, but usually people come to the center and the people who are being celebrated or people dancing, you take money out mm -hmm. and you put the money on their head and stick it on their forehead what? and keep putting it on and you spray them with money. And sometimes you see the young children will try to pick up the dollars and the money. But really, it's a real way to, to give gift the money. So like often you'll have the sisters or aunties coming and putting the money in garbage bags to keep for them when the party's over for them to have. Wow. Yeah. So, so I would dance because I wanted to, you know. So Nigerians <laughs> invented making it rain. Yeah, I guess so. <laughs> That's epic. So yeah, like, I understand you got a master's in sociology. You went yeah. to Stanford, right? Yes, I did. So I wanted to know, like, what's the importance of education in your career? Right. Well, 
first of all, Stanford is what brought me to the Bay. Mm -hmm. I don't even think before I came to came to Stanford that I thought to leave Queens. Mm -hmm. That's I was really pretty basic in that sense where it was just like it was all I knew. Mm -hmm. um, Stanford, in a lot of ways, changed my life. Yeah. Um, I think going to college changed my life. Like mm -hmm. going to college would change your life, but mm -hmm. for me, it was Stanford, and it was very drastic. First of all, going to Stanford wasn't like a like a given. I had was looking at other schools too, mm -hmm. and I felt like the people that I was friends with in New York and in Queens, um, maybe the people at Stanford weren't exactly like that. I felt when I came to visit, I felt slightly out of place. I was unsure yeah. would I fit in, would I yeah. enjoy this, and a academics was very important to my. My, par my parents, my mom, and my dad. Mm -hmm. And Stanford was top five in the nation academics. Yeah. And top five for women's basketball in the nation as well. So, and they also had palm trees. And so, uh, yeah. so it was important for me to come out there. And I'm glad that I did because, yes, it was different people, but it pushed me outside of my comfort zone. It changed all that I knew was possible to aspire for. Mm -hmm. um, like, there are... It's hard to to aspire for something if you don't know what's possible. So I would like see these things. It put me around people who were achieving at a high level. It made me more ambitious. Mm -hmm. And now that I've graduated, the network is real. Right. Like Stanford grads probably tap in with you, see you doing your thing. Absolutely. And y'all could just build a whole community around that. I mean, I could trace a lot of my career path to making the Stanford network work. Like mm -hmm. when I came out of school... So yeah, I did do, and to come back to your th your first question, I did do undergrad in communication, and then I did a master's in sociology oh, that's of funny. business. You know, I was ma majoring in communications before I dropped out. Okay, <laughs> why did you choose communication? Uh, just because I felt like, to be honest, they said it was the easiest. <laughs> but when I got up there, it was hella harder than what I thought. How, how, so so the, hard, the easiest major was the hardest for you? <laughs> like how ironic is that? That's what I get. I've noticed like, my karma works fast. Like, if I do something goofy, it flips back around. So I was sitting in the class, and I was like, I don't know what is going on. Because I like speech class, you feel me? And I can right. write good speeches. I always was good, like, talking and stuff mm -hmm. like that. But this, once I got here, I'm like, what are y'all even talking about? Like, it's it's not like journalism. Mm -hmm. It's not like this. It was like, or maybe my teachers was weird. That could be a big factor, too, because he would just talk and talk and talk and talk. It, but it wouldn't connect to the book. And mm -hmm. then the test would come up be like, <laughs> Sometimes I'll just walk out. Like, you right. feel me? If I got the answers, sorry, everybody, don't cheat. <laughs> but if I got the answers, I'll write the answers down. So were yeah. you were you the type to, like, get a study group or find people to, like, work with and stuff? I tried, definitely. Yeah. I tried in school. I wasn't, like, a bump on a log until, like, my junior year. <laughs> and then he was a bump on a log. <laughs> yeah, that's when everything turned weird. I feel like during my undergrad years, um, I was so busy just trying to get to the next thing. Mm -hmm. so busy just trying to get from class and I, I was an athlete I was played basketball at Stanford as well so mm -hmm. like get to practice mm -hmm. and then for me like people would always ask about Stanford like is it hard yeah um the academic that was not the hard part for me the basketball was the hard part like mm -hmm. just mentally and physically being pushed to your limit every day mm -hmm. being humbled in practice because that's a serious basketball program yeah they were good I mean we mm -hmm. were good we went we went to three final fours but we took the L to UConn in the championship my senior year, and we mm -hmm. lost to uh, Tennessee as well. It was Candace Parker, Tennessee, in a championship. I was, that was going to be my next question. Like, who was on that UConn team? And Maya who Moore. Oh, okay. Maya Moore. Yeah, and she's yeah. still killing. Yeah, yeah. She's so good. She, I mean, what makes, like, Maya special, too, is um, she's really doing things that most female athletes female basketball players cannot like she's able to she's just so strong and fit mm -hmm. and this season too she took her fitness to a new level um she is in better shape than you she's better than you <laughs> she's stronger than yeah. you she's more competitive than you she's fierce and in person she's just this she's so sweet and fun and cool and mm -hmm. smart and awesome it's like there's nothing you, you can't poke holes in my more yeah yeah so she's been she's been and uh crushing it for, for sure. a long time I wanted to ask, like, speaking of basketball, like, especially since you play basketball, do you feel like there's a way for us, because I'm a big sports fan, but to appreciate women's basketball more? Mm. Like, how can we tune in to, like, the WNBAs and the international games and the college games? Like, I watch college women's, I'm not going to lie. Awesome. But um, 
I feel like that's something that we don't appreciate is women's basketball, you know, and it's a lot of great athletes out there and people. Right. So what do you think are some things that we need to pay attention to, maybe some key athletes? Right. Um, this is an ongoing conversation. I feel like I'm constantly talking about why we should love women's basketball more. Mm-hmm. Um, first of all, I think the first thing you need to do is not compare it to men's basketball. Mm-hmm. It is not the same. Mm-hmm. The game is different. Right. The money made is different. Mm-hmm. The product on the court is different. If you're constantly comparing it to the NBA, you're going to be constantly disappointed. Right. Right, 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 right. <laughs> now, if you come and you say, I'm going to see a women's basketball game and I'm excited to see Maya Moore. Gosh, I love how fierce she is. Um, you know, I love how, she, how hard she goes each time. You know, this WNBA finals this season was incredibly compelling one because the WNBA changed their playoff Mm -hmm. format so before the way it was doing it the top two teams kind of ended up on the west Mm -hmm. and they knocked each other off and then the finals you know you didn't get to see that premier matchup in the finals Mm -hmm. they changed it so it's the top eight teams and the top two teams ended up seeing each other it was a fierce battle it went each game was exciting it was the sparks and the minnesota lynx Mm-hmm. and um, Maya Moore and the Minnesota Lynx and the Sparks. And kind of the story there with the Sparks, Candace Parker had never even been to a WNBA final. She's never mm-hmm. won. She's a great player. Neka Ogumake, my teammate at Stanford, oh, also wow. my best friend, yeah. um, won WNBA MVP this year. Shout out to Neka. That's big. And, so they, and then also Magic Johnson is backing this team. Like, if the storytelling is good on top of the product being good and the games are good, people should come watch. And people did. Mm-hmm. And the the Sparks won won a championship, you know? And so it was um At least somebody was from special. LA was good. You know I'm a Lakers fan. Right. So I'm struggling. I mean, but you how about Luke's Lakers? Right. Way better. Way better. <laughs> like, my opinion on the coaching staff over the last few years, I didn't like Byron Scott. I know Kobe liked him, but I didn't yeah. like the system that he implemented with those Lakers. I didn't definitely didn't like D'Antoni. He's a space case to me. You right, know what I mean? Right, but right. Luke Walden, I feel like he was ideal. He brought Brian Shaw back. Right. And just the system. He's a former Laker mm-hmm. and he's a young, good coach. And everything he did for the Warriors while Steve Kerr was out was is amazing. You know what I mean? Right. And he I started mean, you guys so good. Like it was great. He's so cool. Mm-hmm. Luke Walton is so cool. He's so charismatic. He's like People will say he's a player's coach. He's so easy to like. I think that mm-hmm. makes him easy to want to work hard for. Mm-hmm. And as you said, Coach Scott, who's awesome, and I I, I like him. Um, I think it was a tough situation for him, too, to have to handle the Kobe fa- farewell tour, yeah. have these young players. Mm-hmm. His I covered them a little bit last season. Like, he had a whole tough love approach. Mm-hmm. And that was hard on him. Like, these guys feel refreshed now with Luke Walton. And that staff, like, I just did a game with them. Like, they're giving your boys a clean slate. Look what they, they got Nick Young doing. Exactly. Nick Young. Because he was a piece that was not being utilized. I don't even think all. he really played much last He didn't. So, I'm happy to see him do his thing. He intercepted that pass in a game. Winner, <laughs> right. you know what I mean? so, <laughs> and Lou Will did roast him for that. Yeah. What if he didn't make the shot, though, and he stole the pass? That would have been one of the biggest L's probably in the regular <laughs> season. But shout out Swaggy P. That's my boy. You, you know, know so. he's, he's awesome. So Actually, he did his thing. <laughs> I was doing an inter- um a national game for NBA on TNT, mm-hmm. and it was Lakers at Sacramento. And at the end of the game, I'm we're gonna we're gonna interview Swaggy P because he's he played so good. Mm-hmm. And for some reason, he was just kind of off the court. He was walking off the court, yeah. and he was already in the tunnel. I had to go chase him down. I was like, Nick, 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 <laughs> and like I got him. I like grabbed his hand. I was like, We're interviewing you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I had to work hard I seen for that, that picture. interview. The picture looked funny. Like how he was looking at you was hella funny. Like, <laughs> Probably because I it's grabbed like a him. screenshot. He was looking like that. <laughs> Probably never been grabbed or yanked by a reporter before. <laughs> but yeah, let's let's talk about the Warriors. You know, sure. I mean, we didn't come here to talk about the Lakers because right. we could talk about that all day. You know, but anyway, about the Warriors, like, what do you feel like is the team camaraderie like now? It's such a high profile team. You know, it's the most popular team in the NBA, arguably. And it's like, what do you feel like the team camaraderie has been like over the last since the championship year? Right. So, I've been very blessed. Mm -hmm. And I'm thankful. My first year in the NBA, first year covering the Warriors, was the championship year. Mm -hmm. However, I will say I paid my dues. Like, I worked my way up with the D-League team. Mm -hmm. I covered the Santa Cruz Warriors. And that's how I got my foot in the door. Did you see Little B try out? You know who Little B the bass guy is? Yes. He tried out? He tried out for the Santa Cruz Warriors. How'd that go? When did this happen? He didn't make it. Uh, It was probably like two years ago. uh, No, I didn't see that. No. (laughs) 
I did see that. I have seen all his, you know, curses that he's been putting <laughs> on players and people. How ironic is the KD thing? I mean, but he t- he lifted the curse, though, he right? He had to. Because yeah, he, he was did. coming to his town. Right, 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 right. <laughs> um, Well, that's good news. Um, but no, I, I was just there for Santa Cruz Warriors. I was their color commentator and analyst, mm-hmm. which is kind of progressive for the Warriors organization to have a woman mm-hmm. in that role. Usually for a pro, even though it's a D-League, Usually that's a man doing the analyst role for men's sports. Mm -hmm. So anyway, Rick Buecher didn't come back with the Golden State Warriors. And the spot opened up. And it was the Warriors that ended up pitching me to CSN. And that's how this happened. So my first year, I would say my first year was the championship year. And the first two years, this team was so close-knit. Like, Warriors were so off the court, would hang out together. Sometimes, like in the NBA, guys have so much... Sometimes guys don't like each other. Sometimes they're jealous. Mm -hmm. Sometimes you have so much money. It's kind of like you got your own crews. You got your own, you know what I'm saying? You do your own thing separate. Like everybody was together. Team dinners for the Warriors are something special. Mm -hmm. And I think think it it really is because they also invest quite a bit into it to have nice dinners all the time. Nice places, nice chefs, special. Have the family there, have the staff there. I mean, it's money. But I think it pays off because the players come. You know, some, some teams can't do that because a lot of other teams... The players wouldn't come. You'd just be feeding the staff. Mm-hmm. And so that's not the point. So I think it's important that it continues to build the culture and the camaraderie. The first two years, I mean, it was special. I mean, those dinners would go into like two in the morning, laughing, talking, being together. It was like together, a family environment. A family and environment. And it, and it translated on the court. So now this year is the third year since I've been there. And it's the KD year. And um, I still think the team is close knit. I do think it's different. You lost a lot of. Funny pieces of the team. Brandon Rush, comedian. Spates. <laughs> Barbosa, comedian. Mm-hmm. Spates, also very fun and funny. Like, I mean, you lost great guys. Spates, Azili. I mean, there was a there was always a good reason to laugh around Festus. Yeah. Um, and then obviously Harrison Barnes as well. So I mean, the chemistry changed, but the guys coming in, and I already kind of feel it for this season's team. Um, they're they're really getting quite close and and friendly. I know Steph just had a Super villains party at his house. Okay. And had everybody. I know guys have had barbecues. The coaching staff has held uh, ping pong outings for them. That's popping. Yeah. yeah like they, they, they've done a lot. And actually, I think it just it was just going to take time. But the personalities, the, they're veteran guys. Mm-hmm. David West, Varaja. Well, Varaja was here. But David West, Zaza Pachulia, they mm-hmm. want it to work. They understand what they have to put in. Kevin Durant is such a nice guy. Yeah. It is. And Surprisingly. He's so cool. Why is that surprising? Because you think somebody at that level, you know, for him to be so grounded. Right. It's super cool. Like, it's super cool. And, and he's kind of chill, right? Yeah, his attitude, I feel like it fits in the Bay like really well. He loves the Bay. Mm-hmm. I mean, mm-hmm. the Bay actually was a, a huge part of him coming, not just the team. Right. You know, he. I think he said when he did the Super Bowl here, and he took he was acting as a photographer during yeah, the Super Bowl. Yeah, that was funny as well, though. I'm not yeah, I mean, lie. <laughs> that lens was so big, like him holding that was hella funny to me. <laughs> But, you know, he doesn't have to do that. Right. You know, he could just come there and sit in a suite mm-hmm. or be whatever. But actually, one thing that I find um, very cool about KD is he's he's a really kind of, he's got an eclectic taste in life. Mm-hmm. Like, um, he's kind of like a renaissance man a little bit. You know, yeah, like, yeah. like he does outdoorsy things. For real. Yeah, like, um, you know, he en- enjoys to travel. I mean, you could you could just follow him and see. He enjoys to travel. He... Um, you know, he, he's on the plane. Draymond's always joking on him, but he's on the plane making beats. He I loves saw music. On yeah, Are y'all going to work beats. together? That would be dope. I talked to him on FaceTime and he was rapping my song, which was crazy. What? You know, he always tweets and deletes. So he tweeted like a song. I got a song called Dogs. Okay. So he tweeted like some bars of my song. So I thought that was fire. Yeah. And, we and got he a deleted it? Friend. You know, he tweets and deletes right. though. That's what he yes. does. Yes. Uh, Katie, be better than that. But yeah, like, <laughs> definitely. And I, think, we... I think he made a beat for Wale or something. Okay. Like a while back, like okay. when he first came in the league. So I know. And also Bay Love, um, Damian Lillard. Just put, I mean, he's really talented. Yeah, he is. He you know, is. just put out an album. I hope. So I'm just going to put all my hopes out there. I hope uh, JaVale makes beats too. So I hope that you get some kind of Warriors thing together where like JaVale and Kevin Durant are making a beat. Mm-hmm. You're on it. Right. And also in the future, you work with Damian Lillard. We got to build that bridge. <laughs> And maybe I could get a jersey and play a game. You feel me? Let me yeah, throw it all in there. Feel me? Just don't dog me too bad on the court. You feel me? But, uh, 
What was I gonna say? You like a very popular figure right now. Like mm -hmm. I see you all over social media and memes, all okay. type of stuff. You know what I mean? <laughs> like so when you first came into this business, did you anticipate like the celebrity status and how are you like adjusting to being in that position now? Right. I mean, I, I have noticed more popularity. Mm -hmm. And first of all, I just again say I'm very thankful for the timing of catching this team mm -hmm. and this platform. Yeah, it was a blessing. Seriously. It's a blessing. You know, I, I don't take for granted that um, a lot of eyes are on the Warriors. Mm -hmm. And by default, you know, they'll see me. Yeah. It also takes hard work and preparation to be ready for this opportunity. You mm -hmm. know, I could flop in it, but right, I'm right. trying to do the best to take advantage of it. In fact, even with Kevin Durant coming in this season, I actively thought I need I, I need to take my game to the next level. Right. Um, because this is an opportunity. This is a stage. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to be cri more crisp. I want to be more informed. Like things that I thought about this season, I was like, you know, also continuing. I do the sideline reporter role for the Warriors, but in a lot of other formats, I've been used as an analyst. Mm -hmm. I want to be more well-informed around the league, not just the Warriors, not just the Western Conference. So I've been studying more. I start my days um, maybe an hour and a half just, like, reading the top the top stories in the league and yeah. just trying to see, like, what's going on so that I'm well-versed. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I watch almost every broadcast back, all my hits. Like, I, I think about how I could have delivered that better. Um, and also, all of this makes me feel more confident on air. Mm -hmm. um, and I've I've just become more, and also it just comes with time too. Yeah. But I think as far as like the popularity, like I appreciate it. It is it's just uh, this team is so popular, and Bay Area fans, Warriors fans are so wonderful. Locked they love, in, locked I think in. the best fan base, honestly. I'm telling you, and like they appreciate, they're informed fans. Like they appreciate anything associated with it. And I get, mm -hmm. I don't just get feedback like, hey, you know, see you on TV. I get feedback like, I thought that the second question that you had in that Andre Iguodala interview, or I like the way you brought this out, like they're really they're locked really in, locked you know? really locked in, definitely. And it's moving. And at times I've been surprised sometimes to hear like, my daughter loves you. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, when 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 it's on, I, we, we actually used to fast forward through those pieces, but like yeah. my kids like to watch it. Like, it's humbling, um, sometimes surprising, and I'm just thankful. The memes are just, you just got to learn to laugh, though. They're funny, though. You got to admit. I've been a part of a lot of memes. I've been a part of, like, seven memes already. The like, memes <laughs> that probably damn near half the planet have, have seen. Like, right. You know I mean? so, that's, like, crazy. Right. And you know what's funny? My friends will send me the memes like I haven't seen them. And <laughs> you got to act like it's funny every time. I just LOL. Smiling, crying, emoji face. Right, right, LMAO. Right. Like, I, one cool thing that I've seen, like, they made a t-shirt, and it had the t the players, and it had your name. That was dope to me. That is humbling. Like, mm -hmm. first of all, it's, there's the people are wearing it. There's an right. actual Instagram account of, like, people wearing the shirt. I hope you're selling that shirt. I'm not selling a shirt. And you know what? You, a lot of people was like, you better be making some money off that shirt. You're right. But I'm not. I mean, I'm not, I'm not trying to, like, make money off of this outside of... Like in that way, I mean, I probably maybe I need to, but you know, you're a mogul. You know you what I'm saying? saying? But, <laughs> mm, but what I kind of felt like these people made that out of just love for me, right? And at first, they weren't even selling it. Like at first, they had just had the shirt, and one of their friends tweeted it, like we made a shirt. Yeah. So then I tweeted it, and then people were asking about it, and then they made the shirt and started to sell it. And so I was like, you know what? They started this. They were they did something that was like. You know, it was cool spirited. Yeah. So I, I tweeted it. I even took a picture in it for them. I'm like, yeah, I hope y'all make money off that shirt. Like, yeah, go yeah, ahead and yeah. make some money. <laughs> but you know, in the future, we need Raj shirts <laughs> oh, ASAP. ASAP. Don't nobody need Raj shirts. You Tap need Raj good plug. questions. Oh, good questions for sure. Though. <laughs> but you know, everything's a business. You feel me? Like, yeah. I noticed, I felt the same way as you. I'm like, I just want to rap. I don't want to do nothing extra. But at the end of the day, it's like people are so in tune with you and your energy. And it's more than just you doing your question thing. It's mm. like, they connect with the person. You know what I'm saying? So right. somebody that's that dedicated to their craft, I think it's like just supporting them like how you would support Jordan. You know, right. we buy his shoes because he's so great. Right. You, you know what I'm trying to no, say? No, I feel you. I feel I feel like we buy into the excellence exactly. of Jordan. I'm not sure. Also, the times are different. Like, he yeah. wasn't here with social media. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure how much of himself he shared with us. But did right. it matter? He was so great. That's all we needed. You know, That's a good point, you too, You know what though. I'm saying? That's a good point, too. Because you know I think that affects a lot. 
Because if we seen him just in his kitchen, like making a sandwich, like how you would see any other celebrity now, right? We see celebrities in a way that we have never seen them. Like my idols growing up, I didn't see them. Like when I heard your music, when I saw your video, when I saw your basketball game or mm-hmm. your football game, that was it. Right. But now it's like we see y'all when you're crusty and all that. So, stuff. so do you prefer to have that? separation or do you defer, prefer for your idols to really know everything about them i'm a super fan you feel me i'm a stan i've been a super fan since i was born mm-hmm. so everybody that i was into from kanye west to little wayne to jay-z you mm-hmm. know outcast all those kind of people i wanted to know every single thing about them like, right. where they went to high school where they did this they first this and that so that was me but don't sleep on the t-shirts it's my wait, wait no i hear you yeah, yeah, hey, they don't want you, they just want Sue. In the mailbox, hope the check came through. I like my text blue, I like my checks new. And if you ain't real, then they don't respect you. Nah, like moving on to music, like I know Beyonce. Whoa, <laughs> that's crazy. That's I don't know if you I go to take you as like a Rihanna person. I, I love know. Rihanna too, and actually I think her last album was really awesome. There's nothing that sounded like that right now. Yeah, HBK, yeah, you know how we play. And I can't quit, all I know is, all I know is gay. Hey, hey.